This is the second part of the numeric derivatives demo. In this part, we'll implement the three numeric derivative schemes from the part 1 video in MATLAB. Ride quality and ride comfort are two relatively new topics in the automotive industry. You actually have some experience with this if you've ever gotten car sick or motion sick. Driving over a series of bumps, making a bunch of sharp turns, or suddenly accelerating can induce motion sickness. In addition to motion sickness, all of the above can also make the vehicle itself unstable. One of the metrics automotive engineers use to quantify ride quality is the pitch rate. This is a common coordinate system used in the industry. Pitch is basically motion in the front and back of your vehicle. When you brake, the front of your car slightly dips downwards because weight is shifted from the back to the front. This is called forward pitch. The opposite occurs when accelerating. Weight shifts towards the back of the car, so the front of the car tends to lift up a bit when accelerating. This is backwards pitch. To ensure a smooth and safe ride, you shouldn't induce severe pitch changes in the vehicle. This is essentially what the pitch rate is measuring. So in the demo, we're going to look at data from two vehicles driving on the same track. One vehicle was equipped with a control strategy, and we'll see what it does later in the demo. This data was taken directly from one of my research projects, so I'm not doing this just for the class's sake. It's an actual example of how ME2004 directly benefited me. First, let's load the data into MATLAB. Make sure you download the ME2004 underscore pitchdata.mat file into your working directory. When you run the code, you should see three variables appear in your workspace, pitch1, pitch2, and t. As the name implies, t is the time vector. Pitch1 and pitch2 contain the pitch data for the two vehicles in degrees. Whenever you have a dataset in this class, you should always plot it. So uncomment the plot commands and run the code. From the legend, we see that vehicle 1 does not have the control law implemented, but vehicle 2 does. The plots look decently similar, more or less. The pitch of both vehicles spikes upward around 25 seconds and spikes downward around 65 seconds. But this data is the pitch, not the pitch rate. To get the pitch rate, we have to take the derivative of this data with respect to time. If we had an equation to describe this data, we could analytically differentiate it to get our pitch rate. That approach clearly won't work here. Good luck trying to curve fit this data. This is the main reason why we need numeric differentiation. Sometimes it's impractical to analytically differentiate, so we need to do so by another means. Let's skip to the end of the code and write a numeric differentiation function. You've probably already written a numeric differentiation code in this class, but I'll show you my take. After all, there's more than one way to solve a problem. Let's start with the header. And don't forget the end at the bottom. As usual, I included some comments about the function. We can see that the output is a vector called dy dx, which holds the computed derivatives. The name of the function is numeric derivatives, and it accepts two inputs, x and y. x is the independent variable, and y is the dependent variable. I also like to include the units of each variable. This nd means non-dimensional, since this code is general enough to be used in any application. In our case, x will be in seconds, y will be in degrees, and dy dx will be in degrees per second. If you were going to use this for, say, a circuit problem, you'd obviously have different units, so nd is my way of generalizing the units. As discussed in part 1, the first element in the dy dx vector will be computed with a forward difference. The last element in dy dx will be computed with a backwards difference, and we use a central difference for all the points in between. I'm going to make a very large assumption here and assume that all the elements in x have a constant step size. This is a huge assumption and may definitely not be true in future problems or applications, so make sure this assumption holds true if you want to reuse this code. 
let's go ahead and pre-allocate the dy dx vector to make the code a little more efficient. Okay, now we can start populating dy dx with the different types of derivatives, starting with the forward difference. If you recall, the forward difference is computed by taking the difference between the current point and the successive point in the y data and dividing it by the corresponding x points. We're assuming a constant step size, so we can actually replace the entire denominator with just h. The backwards difference is pretty similar. We can use the backwards difference at the very last point in the dy dx vector. To compute the backwards difference, we take the difference between the last point and the second to last point in the y data and divide it by h. I'm using the end keyword to generalize my code to fit x and y vectors of any length. Alright, now for the central difference. We can use a for loop to step through each of the interior points in the x and y vectors and compute the central difference. The central difference is the difference between the points immediately in front and behind the current point divided by 2h. Here, we divide by 2h instead of just h because the distance between the points in front of and behind the current point is two steps away, not one. i is the loop counter variable. It's keeping track of where we are in the dy dx vector. We start counting at 2 instead of 1 because the central difference applies to the interior points, aka the second point, to the second to last point in the vector. The forward difference is the first point in the dy dx vector, and the backwards difference is the last point. That's why we stop counting at length of x minus 1. If you did i equals 1 instead of i equals 2, you get an error because you'd try to calculate the central difference using the zeroth point in the dy dx vector once you got to this term. Similarly, if you did length of x instead of length of x minus 1, you get an error because you try to extract the point after the last point in the vector once you got here. Alright, that's it for the function, so let's scroll back up where we left off. To compute the pitch rates, we can call the numeric derivatives function for each vehicle. Uncomment the plot commands and run the code. Even though the pitches of both vehicles look relatively similar, the pitch rates tell a whole different story. Overall, the control system on Vehicle 2 did a pretty good job at mitigating a lot of the harsh peaks that Vehicle 1 has. The spike around 20 seconds is much more prominent for Vehicle 1 than for Vehicle 2. At around 62 seconds, we can see that the controller reduced the downward spike by over 50%. What this tells us is that Vehicle 2 produces a much safer and more comfortable ride than Vehicle 1. There are going to be some trade-offs, but that's not really relevant to this example. That's it for this demo. I hope this showed you a real-life example of how I use numeric differentiation in one of my research projects. By numerically differentiating my data, I was able to prove the validity of the control system I designed. I truly believe ME2004 is one of the best classes in the department because it's so applicable. As we progress throughout the course, start thinking about how you might use the concepts from this class in your academic and industry life. See you soon.